Hey guys and welcome back to another Tasty Blender 2.82 tutorial. Now I saw your comments and yes, today we'll be taking a look on how I do my materials, how I do my lighting and how I do my rendering. I'll show you a couple of tips, a couple of tricks that you can use and hopefully you'll learn something from it. So let's get into it. So what I have here is a animation project that I'm setting up for my Instagram. As you can see, I already set the camera to be at 180 by 180, which is usually a good format for Instagram. And I have this looping animation. If I press Z and go into wireframe, you can see how the balls are falling outside and then re-falling. So basically it's just repeating an infinite loop. Now, what I want to do is I want to have faces on my balls and I want to have these two cylinders in a particular color. So I'll show you how I go about it. Now, I'm going to select this ball over here, and as you can see, I already did some steps that I did in my previous tutorial, which is selecting these edges, pressing Control E, and then clicking Mark Seam, and basically unwrapping that portion. That means that when I apply a texture, it's going to be seen only on that part. So if I divide my screen and divide it again, I'm going to go into the shader at the bottom. So shader editor at the bottom and UV editor at the top. So if I go inside, you can already see I did some of the steps. So basically the large circle, I resized it down and the front, I actually resized it to be a bit bigger. Now I'm going to add a material to this ball and this material is going to be called face ball, for example, like so. I'm going to click on the principal BSDF, press Ctrl T, and this is going to put immediately a texture coordinate, mapping node, and image texture. So in this image texture, I'm going to choose a face that I've created in my free time. I just drew up some very simple faces. And I'm going to put a nice little face. If I go into my material view, you can see that nothing is happening. Go into edit mode, and you can see that the face is appearing in the middle, but is black. Now this is happening because this is a bit of a different workflow than the previous tutorial. Basically we have transparency, so we're working with transparency. In this case we have to work on this material just a bit more. So I'm going to move this material output a bit further out and I'm going to duplicate the principled BSDF. I'm going to shift A at a mix shader and I'm going to connect the two. Now, basically, this is going to be the principal shader that influences what happens with the shininess or roughness or whatever of the actual PNG texture. And the bottom one is going to be the material of the actual ball. So, what I have to do now is I have to connect the alpha output of my image texture with the alpha output of the first principled BSDF. So, we have this. And then I have to tell the mix shader to mix just the texture, not the alpha of the first principle with the second. So I'm just going to add a invert node in this case. And I'm going to connect the alpha to the color of the invert and color to the factorial. And we have this. Now if I want to change the color of the ball, I can just choose the base color of the second node and change the color as I wish. This is the basic setup for this type of material. I'm going to repeat the same process on all other three. However, I'll be doing a different face every time. Don't worry if you have the same face for every single one. You can just do it again. However, you can repeat the same process by UV unwrapping, adding, aligning your face, whatever. One thing I can show you though is you can select the ball that you had selected before go into this drop-down menu and click copy material. Now if I select the second ball and then select the same drop-down menu and paste the material, nothing's gonna happen because we have to add a new material. Let's call this one face ball 2. And now I'm going to paste the material and this is going to paste the exact material to my lower ball. However, you can see that there's a slight problem because the alignment is a bit different, the sizing is a bit different, so you can play around with that, you can align it, you can fine tune it however you want. I'll be adding a different face to this one, for example this, 
and I'm going to repeat the same process on the bottom one. So I'm going to delete this middle cylinder because I don't need it anymore. That was more of a guide for me to basically guide the balls to fall inside of those two cylinders, like so. Perfect. So now I have to choose my colors. Now, if you're ever stumped with color choices, I strongly suggest you use UI gradients. Now I'm going to show you a trick of how to apply this. If I choose this top cylinder and just put in a new material and say color cylinder, for example, and I just change it to a violet. So it looks like this. It's not bad, but if I go into rendered mode and if I light it, it's not going to look the best possible it can. If you don't want dull materials, you can click on your principal BSDF, control T. This is going to add, again, the texture, the mapping and the image texture. Delete the image texture and add a color ramp. Now you can connect the mapping vector to the factorial and the color to the base color of the principal BSDF. Now I don't want to use the UVs, I want to use the generated. So it's going to fall from the top to the bottom, like so. Gradients are a great way to make uh, your colors pop a bit better. So what I usually use is UI gradients, this one. Basically, I'm going to choose one of the colors that I need. So in this case, I'm going to go for a violet one. Maybe I'm going to go with this one. You can just click on the hex code, which is going to copy it immediately. And then in your color ramp, you can choose, let's say, the black one. Click on it, control V to paste the hex code, and that's going to paste the first hex code. Return to UI gradients, copy the second one, and then paste it to the white. And you can see you have a nice gradient distribution. Change the linear to B spline. And another thing you can do to bring even more interest to your gradient is actually add a gradient texture by going shift a search for gradient add the gradient texture we we'll use the quadratic in this example you can also turn around the rotation of the y-axis so it shows like this so you have a different distribution of your gradient let's just copy that material to the bottom cylinder so i'm going to select the bottom cylinder the top cylinder copy material to select it and it copied my material perfectly. If you're ever lost on what you want to do with your other colors in the scene, I suggest the following. Choose the lightest of the two colors you used in your gradient, copy the hex code, and then go to Adobe Cooler or Adobe Color. I don't know, if you write Cooler or Color in Google, it will show up. In the middle position, paste your color, and that's going to bring up different ways of how it can be distributed on the color wheel. So let's say we can go with a triad. So in a triad, we need a yellow color. So in this case, I'm not going to copy this hex code, but I'm going to return to UI gradients, return to show all gradients, and I'm going to scrub, let's say, this yellow or orange side of the gradients. In this case, I really like, let's say, a lighter color, because we have these faces and we can have very dark colors behind them because they're not going to show very well. So I'm just going to, let's say, choose the Sunkist. For example, this is a bit more, say, a paler, pastier one. So what we want to do now is not copy the material, but we want to copy just these guys. So the texture mapping, gradient texture and the color map. Control C to copy them and then go into one of the faces and at the bottom principal BSDF press Control V to paste your selection, move it down and then connect it to the color output of the second principal BSDF. We can just change the hex codes to the ones that we were looking at earlier. The Sunkist, in this case I chose the Sunkist, if you chose a different one don't worry. So darker color first, lighter color second, and we get this. You can also choose different gradient texture like uh, types. So you have different distributions of color, like the spherical one, then you can influence how much of one singular color is going to show. You can rotate it around. So that's completely up to you, but immediately it looks much, much better. So I can now just, let's say, drop it down so it's not as dark as it is. 
I'm going to copy these settings and just add them to my other gradients like this. And I'm basically done. Now I want to do something for the background. In this case, I'm going to add a new material. I'm going to go background balls so I know what's happening. And I'm just going to do a very simple color and I'll be just scrubbing the color wheel, seeing what really catches my eye, seeing what really works. I think this kind of lilac light blue one works pretty well with this one. Maybe I can just bump it up. Roughness specular, I'm going to leave it there. Before I close this right window, I want to make one more thing, which is a mesh light. Now, I'm not a big fan of putting in lights uh, like area lights or spotlights. I like to create my own. So I'm just going to create a plane. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees on the Y axis. And I'm going to move it, let's say, about here. Yeah. Scale it up. Control A to reset the scale. Maybe I can move it up slightly. Maybe I can just lower the scale slightly so it's not as big, like so. Yeah. I'm going to add a new material. This is going to be my, let's say, key light. I'm not actually going to use it as a key light, but I think it's going to work fine. I'm going to delete the principal BSDF. Now, I'm not going to be showing you everything. This is a process I did in my in one of my other tutorials, which is, uh, I think it's like studio lighting, where I show you how to create your own mesh lights. So I'm just going to go real quick through this part. So this is the final node tree for my mesh light. So you can pause it here and take a look, maybe copy it if you don't want to look at the other tutorial explaining this stuff more in depth. I can return to my camera view. I can just rotate this mesh light so I can correct its position slightly, like so. I can just move it so it's going directly towards my balls over here. And now I want to go into my rendered view. Usually by default it's set to EV, but I already changed it to cycles. So I use cycles, GPU compute, and I put a sampling rate of 150. And then I usually lower down the transparency to, I think I leave it at the default settings and I just lower down the diffuse and the total bounces to 10. It just gets a bit quicker. Indirect light to 4.45 and the filter glossy to 1.5. Another thing I usually do is if I'm using Filmic, I use the high contrast look. So it returns just a bit of saturation back to the picture. Let's see what we have got. So this is how it looks like. Right now we have this. So we have this strong mesh light over here. And now I start to position this light so I can find the main focus of my picture. Now the faces are on the left side. So I have to change the position to the left like this. So we have this sort of visual interest over here. Now, I'm trying to pinpoint the location whenever I'm doing lighting, I'm trying to find like a nice distribution of light and dark color, because that's what creates the actual visual interest. Let's change the position of the ball so it looks something like this. Now I can start on my materials. In this side, I want to have a lower roughness on my cylinder, and I want to increase the specular to about 0 0.7, the specular tint to about 0 0.5. So it kind of tries to mask the roughness of the actual cylinder. So that's what I usually do for my materials, where I want to have more glossiness to the material. I can do the same for the ball, so I want to drop down the roughness on my balls. So I have to be careful which principal I'm influencing. So it's this one. In this case, I can also go ahead with the specular. And if look what happens when I increase the specular tint. So it's basically mixing in the reflection of the emission. So it's not as glossy as it, as it is. So this adds a bit of softness to the actual material. 
I'm going to basically copy the same settings to all other balls. So it's 0.7 for the specular, 0.4 for the specular tint, and 0.4 for the roughness. Like I said, very simple stuff. I don't overcomplicate things too much. I don't like to do that. I'm not a huge fan of that. So yeah, going to copy the emission again, maybe try and position it to another side, another position. This is where I usually experiment. I try to find maybe different angles, maybe something that I haven't found before, like so. So you can already see the difference. So if I turn it off, it's very divided. If I turn it on, it's slightly less divided. Maybe I can maybe I can just push it in slightly. So I can move it here. So it's working like this. So we have this nice double like glisten. And the last thing I do is I go with an HDRI. In this case, I already set one of my favorites. So I'm just going to push the strength to one. Bam immediately looks amazing like this is what i'm talking about so you have these small nice reflections going on and it's basically what's making the picture much better also the gradient distribution so this is usually what i do not very complicated very easy i can also show you the world setting because this is a in this is an important part of this so when you have an HDRI, whichever one you choose, you can play around with the strength, you can play around with anything, but you also have to set up a texture coordinate and mapping node for the image texture. You can see that I turned the Z axis around. That's because I was trying to find the most optimal way that the HDRI is hitting my image. Basically move the Z axis or rather the Z rotation around so I try and find like a nice position for my camera. Perfect. You can see that I have this nice glisten, white glisten on the, on the edge of the cylinder, which is absolutely gorgeous. Perfect. And this is basically it for my material, for my lighting. Not very complicated, extremely dead easy. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully you've learned something useful, a couple of new useful tricks for materials, lighting, uh, HDRI maps. If you want to see a video of me explaining to you my render process and my compositor process, feel free to leave a comment. Let's get to 100 likes and I'll do that video. Plus I will be offering a project like this one in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one.